Dementia generally doesn't respect any boundaries, geographically, politically. It, affect, it has the potential to affect everyone. My day-to-day -day work is working with patients with Alzheimer's disease and trying to investigate the underlying causes with the hope of making a meaningful difference to them in their lives. My interest in dementia and Alzheimer's disease, it's, it's quite personal. I've seen people with the disease, both in my family, and I've seen it when I've been training as a junior doctor. Alzheimer's is, is the commonest form of, of dementia. There are other rarer forms. One of them is posterior cortical atrophy, or PCA. 50 million people around the world have dementia. It causes a progressive loss of independence through memory changes. When I see people with Alzheimer's in clinic, it tends to be that when you ask them about certain symptoms, they say, oh yeah, that started happening a few years ago. I didn't really think it was a problem, but actually it's getting worse. So it might be that they've misplaced the keys, they go out of the house and um, they forget their wallet, and they think it's a one-off. People have difficulties remembering conversations that have happened earlier in the day. They, they certainly feel that their memory for more recent events is worse than memories in the past, but as the disease progresses, those also get worse goes from quite subtle forgetfulness all the way through to the end stage of Alzheimer's disease where actually people have difficulty eating and drinking. They need 24-hour care. That is the sad reality. Can we do a memory test just to see how things have progressed since last time? Mm -hmm. What's the day today? Gemma, I don't know. The day? Mm. What day of the week is it? No, I'm lost on it. I am. Um, yeah, I can't think what day it is. That's okay, that's okay. Mm. What's the date? No, I don't know that either. The disease itself, we think, is related to two key molecules, which are called amyloid and tau, but there's a whole host of other things that could be contributing to it. As the disease progresses, the brain shrinks. The grooves and the dips within the brain get, get bigger. So your, your brain occupies less space, and that space gets filled with fluid. There certainly is a huge amount of frustration in not being able to cure and prevent the disease. There are medications right now that can sharpen you up and delay the time needed for a person with Alzheimer's to go into a care home. They don't reverse the disease. They don't halt the disease. So from an economic perspective, they are useful but from an individual perspective, they're not good enough. We've just discovered the tip of the iceberg with regards to Alzheimer's research, and everything is there to be discovered. We're still finding out new things on a daily basis, and it's a fast-moving, fast-paced field that has the potential to affect millions of people. I think, within my lifetime, we'll come up with a decent medication that, that certainly halts progress, but also it's thinking about all those people who haven't yet got the disease. My daughter's called Lara, she's 17 months old tomorrow, and I think a lot about her and younger generations, and they will never know that this work has changed their life and they've lived a normal life, and I think that would be absolutely fantastic.